YouTube Live. You're now watching Two Old Farts Making Noises. Welcome to Canadian Art Today. With your host, Paul Constable. And here we are. I still like the candy canes in that. Still yeah. candy canes. This has the flat, the maple leaf. But you still have the candy canes. I still like those. Maybe, so. maybe yeah. come, maybe around Christmas time, you bring them candy canes back. Yeah, we'll put. Do you know what you do? You could do red, white, and green. Very Christmassy. Red, white, and green. Okay. Uh, red, white, yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I know I was working with geniuses here. I'm going to sit here and look pretty. Paul, right. we have. We have, first of all, let's tell all, everybody that's watching that's a fan of your show, today is the first day going forward that we're doing all the shows in HD. Yeah. So all See the you. art will be crisper and better and everything, so we're excited about that. Yeah. And we have a very exciting artist, I understand, today. We always have exciting artists, but yes. definitely today we get uh, artist Jan Corcoran. Um, she, I guess, is what we call as a... Uh, I guess she has a passion uh, and, uh, and she works in kind of an expressionist abstract uh, way of doodling to start with. Like I will call it actually taken out from her website. Um, and I see it more than doodling, but anyway, she, she's very uh, whimsical about her own, uh, she's kind of a mixed media artist and uh, I'm just kind of reading off some sheets here. She has a great clo a closing line on her, email so that she'll send out to all her people and i'm just going to quickly read this little line which will kind of sum up what jan thinks about art and the way she does things life should not be a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving safely in an attractive well-preserved body but rather a skid in sideways chocolate in one hand chardonnay in the other uh bodily body thoroughly used up totally worn out and hollering yahoo what a ride so i am leaving that uh jen is a graduate of bfa um, in uh, university of saskatchewan um i'd like to uh yeah bring jan in she's welcome jan and hold on here we go there's the jan and I, what you what he just read that you wrote i love and i agree wholeheartedly except mine is a scotch in one and a cigar in the other but i agree <laughs> i want to leave with a just a tired done i like it that was beautiful exactly. we're going to be yeah. all worn out by the time we're finished i'm, I'm sure i have to great. say i have to say the quote did not originate with me and i don't know who, who it did originate with yeah. But I've used it for years now, and I just it just never changes because it fits. So it, I like it. And we'll just assume whoever it is is dead because they lived the quote. So now you pass the quote on, and now people will copy the quote and they'll live the quote. It's perfect. Yeah, possession is yeah. nine tenths well, of the law. Yes. We'll have to make sure we put the we put the quote at the bottom uh, on the links on the show today because that's that was just excellent. It'll, it'll take yeah. some breath away. Yeah, can I just say before you before you start today, Paul? I've, I'm it's great to be back on your show again. I missed you. I was I've been on holiday. I missed a couple of shows, but uh, glad to be back and excited as to meet some uh, a whole series of new guests again going forward. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, we look forward Good to time. seeing Jan's some very different work, and uh, <laughs> I've been uh, I guess a fan of, of Jan's for quite a while. So I've, I've been to a number of her shows and group shows, and. Uh, the stuff stands out from everybody else's. So I'll give you that for sure. Very and cool. uh, we'll show you what we mean uh, today. So anytime we just have a great. How was your day otherwise starting, Jam? Uh, good. Okay. It's a beautiful day. What can I say? Yeah, yeah. Well, you have a great view out your studio window, I know, out onto yeah. the street there and activity and people walking around with coffee and uh, enjoying yeah. life. I think that's. You know that it's a great neighborhood that you work in and live in in your studio and uh how many people are in your studio like you've got a, a group studio yeah we have there's 10 women and then there's one poor fellow the son of one of our artists who also comes in but <laughs> i don't think he minds 
<laughs> but it's 10, 10 women and we all have different different art forms that we do. Yeah. It's just um, we're all you, painters basically, but some are also pot, you know, work with clay as as you know. Right. And um, it's an interesting mix. You always have somebody to critique your work. Isn't there isn't work. that the way? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> it's a, you're looking for some support, and you get somebody who's going to be a critique on your stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's it is a it's a, I know you guys are all great friends, um, and you can see that when you have your couple of shows a year as a group shows and things in there. I mean, the level of work that all of you are doing is amazing. Uh, you know, it, it's and it, it shows that you are feeding off each other. You found galleries and you're doing your own thing. And uh, I think that those are great inspirations to have and to find those groups of people that help you. Like they're they're part of your community. They're part of your art even. Not so much they're telling you what colors and things to do because I don't think they could do that with you. But, <laughs> but I think it, it's great to see ideas of how other people see their, themselves and their thinking and their kinds of work. And, and they see how you do your work as well. Um, and I think that it, it's, uh, it's, it's refreshing to see, I guess is the word I'm looking for. So how is your work? Yeah. I don't think I could afford the cost to have somebody come in from the outside and critique the, with the number of critiques that I get. <laughs> or to have a studio. Yeah. Free. Yeah, or to have a studio all on your own in a building of a certain size. So there's affordability that comes with um, people, the common purpose, right, in, in, yes, in the space. Absolutely. And uh, it, it, it's uh, it, it's a lovely area, and it's it's a very art area that's happening in where you are right now. So it's uh, it's a good thing to do. So I'm going to just we're just going to. Get Steve, we're going to get David to start our first image. Let's bring an image up just so we have something to um, we can talk about some of this stuff. And uh, Stephen, there, or, sorry, there we go, David. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this this piece, I went when I work, I don't ever very seldom go in with any preconceived ideas of what I'm going to do. I mean, I may have an idea of colors I want to try, but I usually just start off making shapes and I making shapes, I draw into it and then I look for shapes within that and then I respond to those shapes and then I turn the painting and look for more shapes and then respond again. Yeah. So it's, are you working in acrylic or oil? Mixed. Okay, mixed media. So Yeah, often I'll rough. start with acrylic and then go in with oil. Yeah. And hopefully yeah. remember which one I started with. Yeah, you get into <laughs> stuff to put. You can do one thing over the other. You can put oil over acrylic, but acrylic right. over oil doesn't work very good. And no. It will, will, uh, will cause you issues <laughs> later on. Um, so the work is, you know, I find... It's exciting. I mean, it's got it's got this not only punch of color, but you know, it's line based, mm -hmm. but also color fields. Um, and I think you going to your body work. You're you're kind of a warm color palette that you tend to work. Yeah. With. And this one, this painting actually has collage in the bottom left. Okay. Yeah. Corner of it. There's sometimes I'll collage pieces into it. And what do you what do you use? That to... was a piece that I had had. It was a collage that it was a, just a piece of paper that I didn't have anything else to do with, so I collaged it. In. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you get rid of all your scrap paper. Okay, that's right. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so what do you what do you adhere that to the canvas with? Um, usually um, medium. Oh, okay, like a gel medium. Like acrylic surface. medium. Yeah, okay, that, no, it's still got a, it's got archivability to it, so it still does stuff, things for it, but I just, this feels, I don't know, it's fantasial, this piece. Uh, so is this an earlier piece, or is this where you are today? 
Uh, no, this is an earlier piece. It's I usually put the date on, but I didn't put the date on this one. I think it was about, well, probably last year, actually. Okay, that's still pretty current, though. Yeah, it's pretty really current. Still, because I notice you, like, a lot of times you'll do, uh, a lot of your small pieces are in uh, alcohol inks as well, right? So on, yes. U, on UPO. So yeah. do they become, like, inspirations for other pieces of work that you're working on when you're working small? Not really? No, not really. Yeah. I mean, I... I... You know, I, I mean, I just work, as I said, I respond to things and I do that with the alcohol ink. Sometimes I guess I'll bring an idea home because I do most of my inks at home. Right. And yeah, because they're manageable. They're smaller and they're manageable. Yeah, but, I yeah. sit at the, watch the news or watch a program on TV and play with the inks. Yeah. So you said I there's cards. no places, there's no real inspiration coming from a specific thing for when you doing these pieces of work is that can you really say that like that that you're not in or is it kind of by osmosis your walk for instance on along the river on your way to the studio does that light reflections traffic noise those things do you feel that they help conjure up um, an image somewhere or conjure up what's going to happen to that day probably at some sort of um level but it's not a conscious thing yeah it's you know all... I, I mean i as you know paul if you're a visual artist you're always picking up cues from somewhere but how much of that is conscious and how much of that is just unconsciously bringing it in and storing it away i couldn't tell you yeah so don't you sit back when you look at these things or the ladies come in to your studio and take a look at this and do they see things in there that they might have picked up that you came from somewhere, you know. No, you're not, not using really. their color palette, for instance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's uh, this this is how big is this? Oh, 36 by 42. So it's right on. Yeah. So it's it's a substantial piece. So it's it's got, but I like it because it's got it's got a ton of energy in it. I mean, it's it's punchy, but it also feels it feels like a time warp that you've gone through a little bit. So. If you watch on a in a movie or TV show where they want to show somebody just blowing into the past some way, that has that to me. The dark part in the middle could have been anything, and it just this light reflecting out. It's just kind of cool. I like that piece. Thank Maybe you. Maybe we go to another one here, from David. Okay. Oh, this 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 piece was an interesting piece. It's huge, sixty by sixty. I know it, it is. doesn't make that sound big, but. I'm only five, five, three and trying to move this piece around because I turn all my paintings when I'm painting. I'm always okay. every 20 minutes, half an hour or so I'll turn the painting. And this one was a commission and she wanted a piece that was blue and brown, a pale brown. That looks blue and brown to me. Yeah. yeah, and I so I spent over an hour with her at the paint store picking through paint chips, and she gave me these two pieces, and so I said okay, and got the canvas, and and uh, went to work, and after three times of her coming in and looking, at it, she said, "I'm, it's just not, I don't like it." So at one point, I sat her down on a chair, I got my paint. <laughs> and I just started painting into the canvas and I said, what do you want? You know, because I was starting to get sort of frustrated by the process. And she finally, I looked at her and she just had this crestfallen look on her face. And she said, I don't know what I want. And yeah. so then that night she sent me um, a picture she had found. Of, and I said, I can look at the colors. I'll use colors similar to this, but the painting becomes mine. And if you don't like it, that's fine that she loved it yeah. and it was such a sense of freedom to have this huge canvas <laughs> and just big arm strokes and painting into it and really taking back my control of it yeah and um she loved it yeah. and so it was called a moment of madness and she loved the title she said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it well it's very it's very confusing for people because they think they know what they want they do not know what they want. Um, they're trying to match the couch and the 
you know, and it's great to have commissions and it, you know what, you get every, you earn every gray hair you get as an artist when you do yeah. commissions for people that are very specific about things and you spent an awful lot of time with them in the front end trying yeah. to make them happy. And it is a thankless thing. <clears throat> and uh, I personally had it and uh, you just say, you know what, this isn't going to work out. Um, yeah. So, but it's great that she let you have your freedom. Uh, you know, she, she had a color, a color palette that she was happy with. That's fine. Yeah. And you get your freedom as well. It's, it is, you're right. It's a weight off your shoulders when you, uh, when, when you can do that. So were your arms tired after swinging the brush and 60 <laughs> inches of canvas to work on? Just trying to turn canvas. Um, no, <laughs> I, I loved it. I just, and then I loved the going in and just doing the minute details after at the end of it. But and when I do a commission, and I don't do a lot of commissions, but when I do, I always say, you pick the colors, but I'm I'm in control. And either you like it or you don't. And I mean, I, you know, I'll listen to what they have to say, but especially after this painting, I sort of thought, hmm, yeah. rethink commission. I have, I have a policy that I do that I, if you don't like it, you don't have to buy it. Yeah. Unless I'm doing their, I, I never do, their car, truck, farmyard, dog, wife. No. I don't do any of that. But if it's yeah. a landscape or something that I work on, I said, oh, you know, if you don't like it, I'll just resell it to somebody else or do yeah. something else. And yeah. it just gives me something to work on. But uh, I get about a 50-50. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on a lot of that. Yeah. So it takes, it takes the pressure off an artist because you don't yeah. – um, Personally, I'll just, I was a graphic designer for over 30 years. So I've been working for people for a long time. I have a lot of bosses over the years. And then now I don't have to do that as much. So if I got yeah. Like yeah, Stephen sure. and David there that helped me, <laughs> my bosses. Everybody's got a boss. There's always a boss somewhere. So this is, uh, so these are the colors that she was happy with, or this is, do you yeah. just do something? Okay. Yeah, it's a long. It's a long way from brown and blue. A very long way. <clears throat> right. Want, and it, and it, it, they, she sent me a picture of the room it was in, and it's and the room is very monochromatic. It's a big room, and it's um, quite monochromatic. So this in you know light color, and so this just went bang. It pops. Yeah. 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 It really. <clears throat> pops. Well, you want. It becomes a feature. I mean, yeah. that you know, is it about the fireplace or is it about the painting, right? Or is it about the piece of art above the fireplace or is it, what is it about, right? So, it and the great. other thing, I, sorry, Paula, no, the no, other no. thing I try to say about this, and I do this with all my painting, is as I, I never wire my paintings, and I never sign the front because I encourage whoever is looking at it or bought, wants to buy it to turn it. And they'll get a different painting every every turn. Every quarter. And, yeah. So you never get bored. Yeah. I don't think. With the yeah, painting. I got problems with some of that. My sky would be on the bottom. Yeah. The sky would be sideways. But yeah, it doesn't work right. with, it, with landscapes yeah. or anything yeah, else. The landscape abstract painting. it works. Mm, I guess it's okay if it's reflections in water. You can get away with some of it. But <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of stuck in my own personal area. There, there's a piece you really worked up. Lots of, lots of. Yeah, this, yeah. this, this painting, this painting became about. I really got caught up in the mark making and the colors, and because there was sort of a painting underneath it, and and it just didn't seem to. I wasn't happy with it. It just didn't seem to really work. So I just started going in with oil stick on top and and pulling in and pulling back and 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 it really really became about the mark making and colors yeah and it's a big piece you know 36 yeah. by 48 is very good size. it has a very nocturnal feeling to it you know and, mm -hmm. but it's also seductive i like the purples give that feeling it's a little sensual this is mm -hmm. actually a, a quite a sensual piece and i uh it's you know Abstracts are. So I don't have personally a lot of abstracts in my in my collection. That, that I have a few few pieces over the years, but I'm becoming more uh, uh, 
Huh, worldly. Hmm. <laughs> I, you can buy this one if you want. I, I could buy this one. <laughs> Just march down there and buy this one. Yeah, it's available. The, uh, not my wife's colors, brown and blue. <laughs> and, yeah, don't let my wife deal with that. Anyway, we'll, we'll move on. Um, so, and, and in your mark making, though, is that brushwork or are you dealing with oil stick or anything this like was that? oil stick i actually work when i'm going back into a painting often i'll work with oil uh, i like working with oil stick because it's going oil on oil and then i also you work with a palette knife oh, and okay. pulling color pulling color through it and down and working in it that way yeah. and then going in and sometimes i'll have to go in with with the paint and and block out pieces and so but are, are, are my you way of working is very organic. You know, yeah. it's just whatever. Yeah. So are you showing anywhere that your work gets shown? Like right now? Yeah, at galleries or such? Or you get a couple uh, on the go? Well, just Nouveau Gallery in Regina. Okay. Yeah. So the rest are just your group shows that you're participating yeah. in or some yeah. like pop ups and things that you work on. Yeah. Well, that's typical of most artists. Most artists have to you gotta work work what's around you. And uh, yeah. you, 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 you definitely do that. Maybe David will give us another shot here. You can see what's going on. The next image come up here. Ah. <laughs> oh, uh, she says, this is another. This, this yeah. one. This yeah. one was really fun. Sort of. Sort of. This is called the Jazz, the jazz Man. And uh, this was another commission. And it's, um, you know, 48 by 60, so it's a large canvas. But I ha I'm just going to quickly read what, what came out. Okay. The de decor there, she was working with a decorator. This is a place in Calgary, a woman in Calgary who wanted a painting, a big painting. And she was working with a decorator. And the decorator said, trying not to sound like the decorator who tries to match the sofa to the painting. But I was hoping for 35% cad yellow, 25% red, 15 to 20% black, and the balance as Jan sees it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot left for you, isn't there? <laughs> In some respects, it was it was good because it gave me at least a basis to go with. And I mm. said, you know, I'll do what I can do, but. And it I feels, think it, she was thrilled with it. And yeah. it, I got a picture of it hanging behind the grand piano, you know, sort of oh, beside it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a real, it's a feeling of jazz player, right? You got, I think I did a bit of a blow up on the right side. You can get a little yeah. feeling what's going on. It feels very Miro like, um, it, you know, it, it, just the shapes and yeah. uh, this shocking yellow background. Like, it, it's like, these things are like this is really different. This this changed a lot of things in uh, you know working on a yellow color field on the background. So, which is sort of like working on super value. You know, it's just like, <laughs> like you got yeah. a, a super value yellow background, and then you've got a chromium yellow thing, and then you got to work make it look good, right? Like you got to make it, but it does it does pop, right? Yeah, it might not it work really, for yeah. yeah. So I guess if she put it up in a very large room. It it was in an old the warehouse district in Calgary, and they had renovated totally renovated this place into condo into a very large condo, and this right. was to go with her baby grand piano. Ah, nice. No, it's a it it's a it it it's a really out there piece. Like it's it's uh, contemporary, I guess, in in, uh, in nature, and I just think. It's it's so different than you because normally you don't you don't paint subject matter, right? You paint feelings, and yet you still get the feeling of jazz popping here. But you can still a semblance of a sax and of a of a, a person a little bit there. So it, it's a nice it was a nice give and take, I guess, right? And uh, when yeah, you're doing commissions again, it's it, it's it's uh, it is a give and take for sure. You're a slave a little bit to to the buyer. And yeah. especially going through a decorator, my goodness, like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. 
I never had that, and I've never had it since. So a decorator. I I've heard nightmares. It's very specific. Decorators, yeah. decorators sitting over top of your shoulder, managing your colors. <laughs> but I loved it that he could laugh at himself and say, you know, I know this is sort of silly, you know, Ben, and apologize. <laughs> Well, he hadn't figured it down to percentages, and I think, oh my goodness! Like, oh like, no, I just sort of, you know, I, I didn't think they figured out color that way, right? I want a certain, certain yeah. amount of color on the wall behind this <laughs> piano or in that room <laughs> to know that you'd want thirty-five percent cadmium yellow uh, behind on, on a piece. And said, well, like that, yeah. that's pretty bizarre. But I guess as a decorator, you'd say if you want a certain amount of impact, you'd have to have a percentage of and you want it to be a color, yeah. you'd want it to be a certain amount of color, right? So you kind of go, pretty cool that he's able to do that because a lot of people can't, but they just, they don't think that way. We think, artists think differently than um, bean counters and decorators, I guess, you know? They're, well, it was, a, you're going into a very large room. So they wanted something that was big and going to make a statement, I think. Yeah. That was my impression. On a big room, a well, forty-eight sixty still is a big piece, but it's still not huge. Right? It's, it's not huge, but not it's not huge. Yeah, and I've seen pieces where they'll put four of those kind of block stacked together. You want huge? They'll, you know, it's one twenty by ninety-six, right? So they'll stack four of them together. But and there, there's a job. Just you working, working in a little studio, trying to produce large pieces of work. How do you feel that? Like, how do you feel? Does it can you get back far enough or do you take it out in the hallway oh, yeah. and look at it? Yeah, take it out in the hallway. We have sort of a place in the hallway we can hang paintings and get back 12, you know, 15 feet. Yeah. I, I find that's what I need to do. When I work on anything bigger than that, I, I have to get back on it. And even in my studio, it's full of stuff, but you got to be able to yeah. back up and, and sit down with a chair and, and, uh, and think about it. Because it changes. I found that work changes as you look at it and you come back after lunch and it looks oh I see a mistake I see where I should go when there's a lot of times you're so close to it you can't it's sort of like painting on a large wall like a mural I don't know how they do the mural thing other than it's gridded yeah. and you just keep stay within your grid and you back up and it's over okay but it's like oh my gosh like I'm kind of a I like to see where I'm going while I'm doing that right it's really you're just a little close to it sometimes no. But mind you, I'm, as I said, I turn my paintings off. I'm always turning and <clears throat> painting. I'm painting from a different perspective each time. Even this one? Yeah. Yeah. So they didn't know whether they would get a horizontal painting, really, or a vertical painting? It can. They could have done it both, either or. Yeah. Well, that gives them pretty good flexibility because you can put your name on it, but it's just, and, uh, you know. It, it almost feels like when I'm looking at this one, it feels like there's typography running vertically up on the left side, but actually it's not. It just shapes and it looks kind of. Yeah, there's a. It feels like there's a grid in the background. Like I think they're just lines that are drawn in there yeah. to I'm figure out your thirty-five to figure out your thirty-five percent cadmium yellow. <laughs> 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 An artist happy with it, so. <laughs> An artist with their math skills out there with their calculator. <laughs> Not going to happen. <laughs> so many square inches. Okay, here we go. Hi, here we go. Can you tell me about this one? Okay, this one, as you can see, is called Ambling. And this one, this one is on raw canvas. And, um, it was became more about the shapes. It felt sort of, I had this sense of sort of an art deco. You can see on the bottom right hand side, yeah. it reminded me of art deco decoration and, and just this figure sort of floating along, going through the landscape. I, d I don't know what it is, but you know, again, it can be turned, but I, I like the quietness of this piece. Yeah. It's it's more definitive this piece than your previous pieces. The other yeah. ones were a lot of scratch mark making and things. Um, these ones have now gone to a simpler, calming feel. You're right. It is kind of a, it is kind mm -hmm. of a calming piece. Yet there it 
it, I'm getting questions asking me all the time, like, you know, what is going on? What's that in the middle? I'm now finding things to focus on where the other mm -hmm. ones were, you're looking at a full surface area and taking in not only the color field, but the mark making over the whole page. This one has allowed the eye to focus in on two different things. It's the simple shapes in the background and the, and that foreground uh, imagery. And you're going, that's sort of cool. And you can, I'm turning my head one thing. So what would that look like vertically and turn it around? And you know what? And as you rotate it, it you know, it could be anything. Yeah, it's, uh, it works. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of a neat. This one's got a really nice hard edge about it, which gives you um, a focus in the center part. I guess the, the dark blacks, the edging, the drop shadow edging that's been kind of put on this piece, which is different than some of your other pieces that um, more defined, I guess, is what I would say. It is, yeah. Which gives and, a variance and nice. That's what, yeah. So, well, sometimes paintings, as you know, Paul, are just one-offs, you know. Yeah. They're different from all, everything else you do. And why? Like, I, yeah, you know, it's yeah. just sort of experiment. As I said, I mean, I'll throw the paint down and I'll start spraying with water if I'm use, uh, obviously using acrylic. And it's just what emerges. It's not directed. It's not. It's what I see. Yeah. And this, I just wanted to keep it simple. Yeah. And you're not, you know, it almost looks like drips on the left. You're not a real drip artist. So I, I don't see that as being that. But it might have been. The canvas might have been turned that direction when you were spraying water in the bottom, but it, it's, it still has a it has a motion feel to it a little bit with those yeah. little zip lines. It, it's kind of, this one almost feels like an aerial view of like a harbor or a map, right? In the background. Yeah. Because of the, the way the water and the landforms are, right? It feels, I mean, I'm looking visually, I'm just saying that's a nice thing that, you get different things. People see different things in it that relate to them. That's why they buy pieces of work. They find a relationship in your work. And it's nice to be able to uh, do what you want to do and find new audiences for what, you're, yeah, for what you're doing as well, right? they got to feel comfortable with the piece of work. I mean, they're going to have people asking them about it. They're going to – do they feel comfortable with the work? that they that they purchase or are they willing to always sit on the edge very few are willing to sit right on the edge of the knife all the time uh, yeah. yeah this I, to me they look like turtles <clears throat> it could have been yes or a large bug hanging over top of a <laughs> egg well, i didn't want to tell you that <laughs> okay so this these two are again this, I had come back, um, I'd been away and I came back into the studio and I just had these raw canvases and I just took some acrylic and watered it down and just started making simple marks on the canvas. And, and I loved the freedom and I liked the simplicity. I wanted to simplify. Yeah. So that's what I did and then I just used a little bit of the of black um, acrylic <clears throat> inky sort of stuff to outline and so where, move where forward the, a bit. Where did the gray background all of a sudden come from? The warm gray background. Yeah I needed I that was an addition after and I felt it needed something more so I, I had this lovely gray color that I had briefly fell in love with, and so I went on. Briefly. <laughs> well, it, <clears throat> it just... Sometimes, you know, you fall in love with a color that you... And so you start experimenting with them. Yeah. Well, this, it, it feels very, uh, well, I guess almost um, chop-like. Like, it's like, you, you know, um, Chinese, Japanese lettering to... Uh, um, maybe Jack Bush types of things or Per Hudoff even maybe. Maybe you get, were you seeing a Per Hudoff stuff lately? Uh, no, but no. Yeah, I know, I know no. what you're talking But I'm just saying it, it, it's, it's really simplified. This is a good, it's a good challenge to do, I think. And I think being able to switch up from where you were 
to to be able to do this kind of thing to freshen up, to freshen your thoughts and your ideas and you know is that where you're going to be forever until your favorite gray runs out maybe there'll be some of your favorite something else later but but i like i like the feeling that i won't say feeling i think i like the idea that you're willing to take a chance to change up that solidness of that whole background and simplify things and work through uh, spontaneous ideas um yeah so this one you just step up at the canvas and decide what to go is it a I just I just had a brush in my hand. I had some paint on my palette, and I water in my other in the other hand, and I just made it really simple. And I didn't want it complicated, and so, and then I refined it with the black and 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 the gray. Before it was just a um, a raw canvas. Right. Yeah. Sort of a you know. Very warm color. Very warm tone. Yeah. Texture. Yeah. And I yeah. mean, I this this could change again, too. So. <laughs> yeah. No, it's. Uh, but I haven't yeah. changed it, which is which means that I'm still happy with it. So. That's good. Yeah. No. Well, you never know. It's one of those things. Uh, it's it. I can see the progression through when we put this slide presentation together, from the early pieces to what we'll see near the end. Uh, this is a journey and it is. uh it's uh it's a pleasant journey so can you tell us a little bit about like your journey a little bit other than how do you see your progress and what you're doing in your work um i mean that's it's a good question it changes probably daily depending on what i'm doing if i'm working into old pieces or if i've got and then i just love getting new canvas and going you know letting see what happens yeah. like this piece here on the yeah. left i had four four twenty what are they twenty four by twenty four can on um, board and they were really busy and i just decided to take it and this gray which is it's a gray that works it's like a house paint gray so you can go over oil on it with it okay and, and, and an elk, it's actually an elk <clears throat> yeah. yes yes yeah. and so i no it isn't it, it's a water-based and elk is still water-based oh is it yes of no. course yeah. And so anyway, I just started cutting into these pieces and I loved the effect that I that came out of them floating and yeah. I, so I, I just really liked it, the simplification of, of what was busy painting. Yeah. I think I think that's good that an artist can see that. Like being able and it's it's a brave thing to do, but he just to go in and I like those little slices, like these are little islands and yeah, you know, uh, uh, little uh, microscopic amoebas at some time. Who knows what they are? It doesn't matter, yeah. but it becomes these hugely beautiful colored little spaces and yeah. uh, neutralized by that nice gray, open, clean area. In other, words, in other words, it's a free form all the way to all four edges. Yeah. It, it can, yeah, it, it, it's, it's got kind of a nice free. Very different than the one on the right. The image that, again, is it's got lots of energy. Yeah, this is one. Um, this is a newer. This is part of a newer series. It's newer, newer series. Sorry, newer <laughs> series. <laughs> the baby. Right. Um, and I, again, this is when I just come back from holidays and. I had these canvases and I thought I've got to do something totally different. I want to simplify. I don't want to use a huge number of colors. I want to limit the palette and go into it. And that's what I did. And this one, it's called Global View. And this is, I guess I was thinking about, you know, the war in, in Ukraine and Russia and, and what's going on in the Middle East. And I, it just, Feels and then down in the states and the you know the redacting of Roe versus Wade and all that sort of stuff, and it felt to me like 
we're going backwards and we're, you know, coming apart at the seams. And so it's not a very happy picture. <laughs> People look at it and say, oh, I like the colors in that. It's very happy. So I, I, I learned not to explain too much to people. About <laughs> no, I don't. I don't use it. I'm just it, telling you because it's yeah. up there and that's what, I, what's going on. It's nice to hear the background on them, um, but I think it still is a positive painting. I mean, oh, yeah. It, yeah. it has energy and there's this focusing into the center light area. So there's, but it's more storytelling than your previous pieces. Like this one is starting to, you're starting to be a storyteller. Like, like, even though it's in your head and you don't have to explain to anybody, but there's a reason why this one was produced. It wasn't just fill up the canvas with beautiful shapes and textures and colors. This one, you came with purpose. Um, so even though you were kind of spontaneous, you still came with an idea. Well, I guess the idea of sort of maybe followed the shapes. Well, that's okay. Extent, yeah. But, yeah. It's, osmo it's osmosis, right? It, it, yeah. That's how... You know, being able to take that idea from your brain to the end of your brush is really, that's why you're an artist. Like that, that's why you do what you do. That's why other people don't do what they do, right? They're plumbers yeah. and welders and stuff, but. So yeah. this piece is, a, is an older piece and I did a whole series of paintings on about this size, 30 by 48. I'm, my, I'm a series of, for me is probably five or six, maybe seven paintings, all different, but I painted into the middle of the canvas and left white around the outside edge. And there was huge controversy within the studio artists that are here. Some people liked it and some people didn't, you know, the whole thing, you've got to paint the canvas out to make it a full painting. and. And yet, you know, the customers who, my clients who bought p these pieces loved them because it gave them a natural frame for the painting. Yeah. And, and, it, is a, and it is a free form shape. So yeah. if you squared that up, yeah, if you squared that up to all four sides, it's a different feeling. It's oh, a completely yeah. different, different feeling than that. So. I agree with your with your assessment of your own piece. And usually, I go with the artist's judgment. Like, yeah. you know, uh, twelve people will give you twelve different things, right? Ideas. Absolutely. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. That's one of the beauties of being an abstractist. Everybody sees something different in it. And that's the magic of it, right? Um, yeah. Where in a landscape, they just look at all the blemishes and the different things that you forgot to put in. <laughs> the light is going in the wrong direction, the shadows. So, <laughs> okay. And these two are part of that global series. And um, this one, is, the one on the left is the atmospheric rivers. And we had been flying and they'd been talking on the news about atmospheric rivers. And I kept wondering if the plane was going to run into one of these atmospheric rivers. <laughs> So, so then I was talking to a friend who is a global water specialist, and he said, no, you know, the planes are way above the global, the atmospheric river. So I didn't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> You're full of fishes and loaves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so that, the right an atmospheric way. river, would is that where it pulls water from a body yeah. and replaces well, it somewhere else? out of the atmosphere i guess and it's it's up very high in the oh, atmosphere and yeah no. anyway. i think i think they had talked about i think tornadoes or different things like that would pull water yeah. and, and uh they would drop it in uh, in other places it yeah wasn't, it wasn't usually wanted <laughs> yeah i think the coast got hit by some atmospheric rivers for sure they do up the up, coast all up, the time yeah. yeah no these feel um Hmm. I don't know. They feel there's there's some chaos in them for sure, um, but it's still they're still very representational. Is very nice abstracts. They they have a a really different feel than uh, some of the other abstracts I've seen. I think the minimal palette probably helps. Um, that was it. That was deliberate. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, and the uh, drawing into it. I. There was a lot of drawing with this new intense ink 
pencils. You're into all you, the, you're into all you the get new wet and drawn, then the ink will dry, and then you can paint. Okay. So it's a permanent ink? Yes. Yeah, and then you can paint over yeah. top of that, and it doesn't run. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it dries, which is good. I have to go back in the art store again and, and start looking at new materials again. Like this. I'm behind the... Yeah, behind Typical the, art. We can spend yeah. a fortune on materials. <laughs> Just experimenting. And this one, oh, sorry, here comes the yeah. ambulance. No, you're right on, yeah, well, you're on the street. Where the, yeah, we're on 20th. <laughs> that's, oh, there we go. Well, that goes, that goes with the paintings in the last two. That's the soundtrack. Okay. <clears throat> so, this, um, so this one is was sort of the final series in that series from the global one. And, and I like the feeling of this one. It had, um, and I painted into it more than the others. Okay, yeah. And just use very muted colors, except for the red lines. Again, it's very, it's very illustrative, this one. It, it, yeah. It, there's a story here, and I'm wanting to understand it. Like, I almost see a number four written there, and there's a, you know, numbers seem to be jumping out at me. I get a one, and a nine, and a four, and a zero, so there's a lot of, that's you have a very good imagination. <clears throat> I know I do. I just going, <laughs> wow, that's a bonus. Yeah. 1094. What happened in 1094? I don't know. But it's uh no, it's been a pleasure. We had uh, a nice little conversation here like just talking about your work. And uh I'm uh I, I guess it's always nice to see where we're going with our work. And I, I try to make it to your show, at least one of your shows a year. And uh, now with, with, the, with the pandemic kind of slowing down and COVID slowing down a little bit, I think uh, people are opening their doors a little bit more and they're moving around. Oh, there the guys are. There they are. We're back. We're back. So Jan, yeah. question, question for you. Your work is beautiful, but if somebody wants to purchase one, what's the price range? Paul knows I ask this question to every artist, so it's, you're not, so like what's X, X, X to Y, or is that like, so where does it start and where does it go to? Well, it, it's all done on size. So, okay. uh, you know, the bigger ones are 1500 to $2,000 maybe, and the small ones okay. are, can be a couple of hundred dollars. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I love the color palette, Jan. That was really, yeah, I enjoyed that. I'm not, you know, abstract is sort of, you know, a, a bit marmite, I think, but um, you know, I love the way that you that your your color palette sort of really sprang after off off the painting for me. So especially the yellow one. Yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's tough to understand with the abstracts. You know, there's an educational process, and it takes years of either following an artist, I think, or just yeah. looking at different shows. And well, I'm, I'm, fo I'm following you, Paul, because you're bringing all these wonderful abstract artists onto the show. So I'm following. I'm you. learning every there day myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I th and I think I think what because I always encourage people to turn the paintings, and yeah, I mean, one, wonderful one idea. Client said to me, "I have it's fabulous because I have four paintings in one on one canvas, yeah. you yeah. know," and so. And it fits in different areas, like they had moved and they had a big wall for one of the pieces and then they only had a corner. So when they put it on a vertical, it fit into the corner and it was perfect. They just loved the idea of being able to turn it. Yeah, being empowered to do that for a piece of art. Yeah. 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 We have a Lamar Briggs painting and it's the same way. You can turn it and every way you turn it, it's called the Birds of Fontaine. So everywhere I turn it, one way you see a bird, one way you see something else. So I can turn it and it's just gorgeous. So yes, I totally get that. And when you said that, I had a big smile on my face because Good. I'm like, yep, yeah, I get that. I love it. That's beautiful. Your work is beautiful. So thank you. Thank you. It's, it's one You're of the magic welcome. things about abstract stuff. You can do that. The other things are kind of defined what you can do, especially if you got a yeah. signature on them. And, but then yeah. some people sign their signature up the side and do different things. So. It's just the portrait Whatever. upside the portrait upside down kind of might bother a couple of people, but just enough to tick them off. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the art snobs. <laughs> so. oh, <yeah. laughs>
Well, Jan, thank yeah. you so much. We appreciate it. And thank hopefully you, we'll see you beautiful. again. And uh, it was beautiful work and it made us all smile. And I'm sure everybody that's watching made you smile. People that are watching, don't forget to subscribe, like, make comments about Jan's work. And if you need to get a hold of Jan and you couldn't figure it out at the end, reach us here and we'll help you out. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you.